Okay, so I have these three questions pulled out. Um, let me uh, reorder them a little bit to question seven and nine together because they are quite similar in nature to each other. So, and then I'll do question eight um, <laughs> separately because the approach that you need for question eight is a little bit different from approach you need for questions seven and nine. So let me do questions seven and nine together. Uh, these are one of those questions where um, you frankly just have to remember the formulas that apply to each situation. So when you read this, two parakets sit on a swing with their combined center of mass with some distance below the pivot. And I hope as you draw this mental picture in your head that you realize, oh, this is a, this is a pendulum. So recognizing that what the situation is describing is a pendulum. What you need to remember is the natural oscillation frequency or at what frequency? Natural oscillation frequency for pendulum. So when you remember it or look it up in the textbook, natural oscillation frequency of pendulum is given by square root of uh, g over l. Um, the main thing I remember is that it's a square root and that there's a, a quotient of g and l involved. I think through to, okay, if I want a faster oscillation, do I want higher gravitational acceleration or longer length? And I think through, okay, longer length means more rotational inertia. So if I want higher frequency, I want shorter L and higher gravitational acceleration. Anyways, that's how I remember it. In any case, what's important is that you remember it and um, that this is not in unit of a hurt. It can sometimes look that way, but what this is really in is in unit of radians per second. And radian and cycle are these units you really have to pay attention to because uh, they are not real units. So when you forget them, it doesn't result in an algebra problem, but it results in a, a error by a factor of two pi. So what you have to remember is that when you are trying to get to unit of a hertz, what hertz really is, is it's a cycles per second. So you need something to convert from radians to cycles. And the something that you need is the, uh, this, uh, uh, the fraction of, okay, two pi radian. Uh, sorry, I can I'll just say it out loud without writing it down. Um, two pi radian is equal to one cycle. So the radian on the denominator will cancel out this radian. One cycle will give you this cycle. So that's what you need to get a correct answer in unit of hertz. So for the answer here, it'll be one over two pi times the square root of G over L. Just to make sure you convert this to meters, so your L is 0 0.127 meter. So that uh, with the G specified in meters per second squared, your unit work out. That's question seven. With the question nine, it's also a very similar setup. It says, you know, suppose a diving board with the non unit bounces up and down with a simple harmonic modulator with a frequency of three points. Okay, um, so we are given some frequency here. And then it has the board has an effective mass up. Uh, effective mass of eight kilograms, okay? And what is the frequency of the simple harmonic, uh, simple harmonic motion of uh, 75? Okay, so uh, I guess this one involves a little bit more thinking through. So as you read through this uh, description, you have to come up with, um, you have to think through, okay, as, uh, so it's changing some things. It's uh, changing, for example, the mass. So your mass in the case one used to be eight kilograms and your mass in the case two, it'll be the combination of the diver and the board. So it should be 83 kilogram in with my case. And as you're changing mass, you need to think through, hmm, what changes, what doesn't change? Uh, I have some guess that my frequency will change. Otherwise, the answer here will be 3.75. That's not the answer. So my frequency will change. 
but the property of the board, like the effective spring constant, will won't change. K const. So I work through this uh, question with that in mind. Now, with that in mind, uh, what you do need to remember is uh, what is the, the uh, what is the expression for natural oscillation frequency of a uh, mass on a spring, simple harmonic oscillator. And uh, once you remember and look it up, <laughs> do whatever you need to do. The angular frequency of that setup is the square root of k over m. And uh, the way I remember this, um, again, I remember that there's a square root here. I remember it involves a quotient of spring constant and mass. And I think through, hmm, if I want higher oscillation frequency or higher oscillation frequency, what do I want? Do I want a stiffer spring or do I want more mass? Uh, stiffer spring would give a higher oscillation frequency. So that's why how I remember K is in the numerator. So. So yeah, that's what we have. So we have basically two equations here. We have omega one is equal to square root of k is what stays constant divided by m one, and we have omega two is equal to same spring constant k divided by m two, the mass in the second setup. So as you look at these two equations that relate to the two situations. I think one thing that will make things easier for me is to solve each equation for k and set them equal to each other because we'll get two different expressions for k, but they are supposed to be equal to each other in numerical terms. So I'll do that. Uh, let me solve the first expression for k. I'm just going to do the algebra in my head <laughs> that's uh, equal to um, uh, omega 1 squared times m1 and let me uh, solve the second expression for k as well that's going to be well it'll be the basically the same expression omega 2 squared times m2 they are equal to each other and okay so i in setting up this equation i used my um, my guess about k being constant so uh, so that's all done used and i think we are good there and as i look at this expression i know everything except for omega 2 so so let me solve this for omega 2 um, so my omega 2 is equal to um, move <laughs> over so i have the ratio of m1 over m2 um, and then I had to take a square root, so they are square rooted, and the square root of omega 1 squared is omega 1 times omega 1. So I have this expression, and um, if I want, I can go through the whole uh, factors of 2 pi thing to work this out, um, but I think uh, what's uh, uh, a quick shortcut is for me to notice that, um, so I have the frequency f1, and what this expression is telling me is the, the relationship between F1 and uh, F2, that they are related through this ratio. So um, what I can guess from here is that F2 is the square root of M1 over M2 times F1. And if you go through the proper route of inserting the necessary factors of 2 pi, you will see that they cancel out in a way that this is right. So um, so, so that will be my answer here. Square root of m1 divided by m2 times f1 that was given. So, so let me plug in those answers and see uh, what we get. So uh, I think I'm just going to plug in the numbers again. 1 over 2 pi times square root of uh, 9.8 meter per second squared divided by uh, 0 0.127 meter. Okay, it does that thing. Uh, let me just... Uh, so this function n, it, um, it uh, converts everything to decimal units. Uh, I'm just doing that so that I don't have to, you know, replace pi with uh, something. Uh, like approximate, I would rather let the program do it. <laughs> it gives better precision than I would. Okay, so that's uh, gonna be my answer for first question, question seven. For question nine, it'll be uh, square root of uh, m1 was eight,
divided by m2 I worked it out that was 83 83 times of f1 that was given 3.75 uh, 3.75 Hertz and that should give me oh yeah and uh, the Kind of the default bias of this computer algebra system is they want to keep as uh, um, precise numbers as possible. So they will try to do that. Uh, so n has the n function has it override so that it gives me a decimal approximation instead. Okay, let me plug in those answers. Um, I have the answer for question seven. That should be uh, 13.80. Um, what did I do wrong? <laughs> Let me just double check. Uh, oh, oh, <laughs> I know what I did wrong. The first expression there, um, it, this is a common thing. So, you know, when we write 1 over 2 pi, uh, in our head, uh, at least I grouped these two together, computer doesn't do that. Uh, what this was was a half times pi. So I need a parenthesis to make sure that it does the numbers correctly. So then it's okay. 1.398. Um, yeah. It's, um, so, in, you know, uh, watch out for when our mind uh, groups the terms together, but calculators don't do that automatically. It's, it's, uh, you know, computers are quite, um, they, they tend to interpret directives literally. So, okay, um, this should have been still answered to question nine. So 1.164. Yeah. Okay, let's go back and do question eight, uh, which I thought was a little bit different from these two questions. Yeah. So this is what the question is asking. It asks, if a car has a suspension system with some force constant, and I think this is another case where this is the effective uh, force constant, you know, it actually has four springs and all that, we're just going to treat it as one spring. How much energy must the car's shocks remove to dampen an oscillation, starting with a maximum displacement of 0 0.05 meters, delta x max? Oh, this is a very roundabout way of asking this question. So, you know, uh, for the cars, uh, the shocks or the suspension system to re um, dampen an oscillation, basically you want to take out all the mechanical energy. So, um, so really, this is a very roundabout way of asking is uh, for an oscillation starting out with a maximum displacement of the given value, what is the mechanical energy associated with that? That's just, oh, it's just your initial potential energy. One half times your effective spring constant times delta x max squared. That's how much energy you start out with, and that's uh, how much energy you want to take out. So, um, so you just use that formula <laughs> to get the answer. So, um, so let me just plug in the numbers. Uh, one half, 0 0.5 times uh, effective spring constant, 5 times 10 to the power of 4. Um, I'm checking the unit to make sure it's in basic SI units, uh, times I need the displacement, 0 0.055 meters squared. And since I kept everything in basic SI units, I should get the answer in joules, 75.625. Seventy-five point six two five. So that's uh, the last of the questions.